Hello there, I'm Shen and you're watching XDA TV. It's been a few weeks since I've last did a video because I've been very busy. Let's do something different and start off the recent news. I'm not going to talk about Carry IQ because Jeff and Russell Holly can rant about that themselves. There was a week of mass social network updating. Facebook updated their Android app with their new UI as seen on iOS. Twitter also updated the user interface on their Android app and their web page. The Google Plus app got updated with a bunch of bug fixes, including URL detection for Hangout and standard Google Plus links. Google celebrated 10 billion downloads on the Android market by doing 10 days of 10 apps each day for 10p each day or 10 cents if you're in America. The Nexus S received an over-the-air update to ICS. Verizon's LTE Galaxy Nexus's Nexi are finally in stores. Android 4.0.3 got pushed to AOSP, including the kernel source code and the proprietary binary files. It comes with native support for the Nexus S, Motorola Zoom, and the Galaxy Nexus. I know a few people don't know how to build Android, but would like to know, what if I did a video on how to compile ICS? Would you be interested in that? Leave a comment below on what you think. Anyway, Anyway, jumping into today's topic, I will be showing you the different apps to manage files on both your phone, your internal or external SD card, or both. First up, it's OI File Manager by Open Intent. It comes pre-installed on Signage Mod ROMs. Its features include thumbnail support, moving, deleting, renaming, copying files, sharing files to other Android apps, using the native Android APIs. It's completely open sourced, free, and it supports multiple languages. However, it cannot gain root access, but it can browse the system and data partitions. Next is ES File Explorer by eStrongs. It has all the features that OI File Manager has, except it has root, it's not open sourced, and it has a completely different UI. It has additional features like browsing using LAN, SMB, Bluetooth, FTP, integration with net folders such as Dropbox, SugarSync or Box. It lets you compress, decompress, zip and raw archives and you can encrypt them with AES-256. However, I find the huge amount of features very useful but it can lag up the app sometimes. But it's definitely the best file explorer on the market that's free. The next one is Root Explorer by Speed Software. It's the app I personally prefer to use as the basic Android UI. It's basically the OI file manager with root access, text editor, APK binary, XML viewer, a search function, an open with function, and it allows you to create symbolic links. Unlike OI and ES File Explorer, the app is not free. And if you're unhappy, the dev will refund you within 24 hours if you just email them. File Manager by Rhythm Software has the old school white vanilla Android layout. It supports local, LAN and SMB file systems. It can gain root access. You can stream video via LAN and SMB. It has a built-in text editor like Root Explorer and it has its own Swift player. There's also a Honeycomb version for all you tablet users out there. Finally, I'm gonna show you Astro by Metago, Metago, them. It comes with various themes and you can download plugins for support like Bluetooth and SMB. It comes with archive compression and decompression, thumbnail support for images and a built-in task manager, even though task managers are completely useless and usually they do more harm than good. So you don't have to use it. It supports 11 different languages and it's free. It comes with ads, but you can remove the ads by downloading the premium key for $3.99 off the Android market. That's it. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of XDA TV. You can follow me on Twitter or Google+. And if you have time, check out the Girls of Geek calendar for 2012. All the money goes to Press Cancer Research and Bob's in it. Anyway, links to all the things I talked about will be down below. I'll put the QR codes up after the outro and I'll see you next time.